Welcome to this episode of Linear Joinery. In this episode, which is the first in a two-part series on mortise and tenon joinery, we'll be looking at the horizontal mortiser. I'll be covering the first step in any integral mortise and tenon joinery, which is how to create a mortise. The second part of this video series will go into how to create a tenon to fit that mortise. For this first step, we want to have a rough idea of how big our tenon is going to be but it's important to cut our mortise first and size our tenon to fit that mortise. It's definitely worth marking out both your tenon and your mortise piece at this early stage so that you can use the same setup on your combination square, especially if you're creating a flush joint as I'm doing here. For the purposes of this exercise, I'm using rectilinear stock that is 1 3 8 by 1 inch in cross section. I suppose it's also important to point out that this stock has been milled square and has been cut squarely to length so that we've got a six square part. Meaning that all six sides of this linear part have a square relationship to one another. So this will be our mortise piece and this shaded area is where I'll be cutting my mortise. To give you an overview of the machine that we're going to be using, we have a Felder FD250, which is a horizontal, or some refer to it as a slot mortiser. It has a variable speed motor, as well as a spindle that spins both clockwise and counterclockwise. It has a stationary bed where your workpiece sits and is clamped in place, and a head that houses a spindle that moves into and across your workpiece. The operator controls this movement with a lever that moves from side to side and in and out. This movement is limited by stops that are set to the height, width, and depth of your cut. There's a wide range of bits found on the side of the machine. Make sure you're using a bit designed for cutting slots. Either an end mill spiral bit for good chip removal, or a two-pronged reciprocating bit designed to be used in both directions. I'll be using a half-inch diameter reciprocating bit. I'll start by setting my workpiece in place. I'll place the face that I intend to mortise up to the front edge of the bed so that it contacts the brass registration plate. Both sides of the machine have arms that you can mount hold down clamps on. There are a number of shop made accessories that you may find useful as stops or backup fences that work in the table's T-slot tracks. These are especially useful for multiple parts with the same setup and can be tightened to suit your setup with wing nuts. Next we're going to mount the bit in the spindle. Just to be safe, it's a good idea to unplug the machine when you're doing this. <laughs> to tighten the spindle, you'll find an Allen key on the side of the machine. Turn the spindle so that its locking mechanism lines up with the slot in the machine's housing. Tighten the screw and check that your bit is firmly in place. Move the head of the machine into the mortise face of your workpiece. You will have to adjust the machine stops to correspond to your mortise's height, width, and depth. We'll start by adjusting the height of our bit. Turn the bit so that the tips of the two prongs are in a vertical orientation. Loosen off the two adjustable handles that control the height of the head. This will allow you to crank the hand wheel at the back of the machine to adjust the height of the head along with your bit. Once the two tips of the pronged bit align with your marks, lock the height in place. While you can set a range for the width and depth of your cut, the height of your mortise is only ever going to be the diameter of the bit. Next we'll set the width of your mortise. Turn the bit so the tips of the two prongs are in a horizontal orientation. With the smaller allen key that can be found on the side of the machine, loosen the screws that lock the stops on the rail at the back of the machine. These stops control the limitation of the side-to-side -side travel of the head. Set the bit to align with the right side of your marked out mortise. Pull the stop on the left hand side of the rail to touch the pin and lock it in place. It's somewhat counterintuitive but the left stop controls the rightmost limit of travel and the right stop controls the leftmost limit. 
Next, set the bit to align with the left side of the marked out mortise and set your right hand stop on the back of the machine. Now that your width of travel has been set, double check that this is consistent with the mortise you've marked out on your workpiece. Finally, we need to set the depth of cut. Move the bit so that the prongs just touch the face of your workpiece. Unlock the stop along the rail on the side of the machine. Carefully set it at the same distance from the pin that you wish the depth of your mortise to be. Obviously be mindful of how long your bit is. I'll be setting my depth of cut here to an inch and an eighth. Lock your stop in place. Don't forget to plug the machine back into the wall and we're ready to go. The control panel on the side of the machine is pretty straightforward. You have a dial that controls the speed and direction, as well as a dial that controls the power. It's important to set the speed and direction before you turn the machine on. Never turn this dial while the machine is running. Back the bit away from your workpiece to start the machine up. Ensure that you have the left dial set to your desired direction and speed. Turn the power dial on. For this cut, I'll be setting the machine to spin in the forward direction in the first gear. Slowly introduce the spinning bit to your workpiece. Move the bit from side to side, slowly creating your mortise in shallow passes. Once you feel the bit reach the limitation of its depth, make one final pass to ensure that the bottom of your mortise is clean. Then take a final plunge down both cheeks to make sure they're also clean. Turn the machine off and be mindful of the fact that the bit will remain spinning for a little while after, so keep your hands away until it is stopped. Release the pressure on the hold down clamps and remove your workpiece. And that's the first step in creating a mortise and tenon. This obviously creates a round cornered mortise. If it's a square cornered mortise you're looking for, sharpen up your mortise chisels and get chopping. Thanks for watching this episode of Linear Joinery.